Readings from the Liturgical Year by Dom Prosper Garanger. September 27th, Saints Cosmas and Damien, Martyrs. Honor the physician for the need thou hast of him, for the Most High hath created him. For all healing is from God, and he shall receive gifts of the King. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men he shall be praised. The Most High hath created medicines out of the earth, and a wise man will not abhor them. Was not bitter water made sweet with wood? The virtue of these things is come to the knowledge of him, and the Most High hath given knowledge to men, that he may be honored in his wonders. By these he shall cure, and shall allay their pains, and of these the apothecary shall make sweet confections, and shall make up ointments of health, and of his works there shall be no end. For the peace of God is over the face of the earth. My son, in thy sickness neglect not thyself, but pray to the Lord, and he shall heal thee. Turn away from sin, and order thy hands aright, and cleanse thy heart from all offense. Give a sweet savor, and a memorial of fine flour, and make a fat offering, and then give place to the physician. For the Lord hath created him, and let him not depart from thee, for his works are necessary. For there is a time when thou must fall into their hands, and they shall beseech the Lord that he would prosper what they give for ease and remedy for their conversation. These words of the wise man, Ecclesiasticus 38, chapter 1 through 6, are appropriate for this feast. The church, obeying the inspired injunction, honors the medical profession in the persons of Cosmas and Damien, who not only, like many others, sanctified themselves in that career, but far beyond all others demonstrated to the world how grand a part the physician may play in Christian society. Cosmas and Damien had been Christians from their childhood. The study of Hippocrates and of Galen developed their love of God, whose invisible perfections they admired reflected in the magnificences of creation, and especially in the human body, his palace and his temple. To them, science was a hymn of praise to their creator, and the exercise of their art a sacred ministry. They served God in his suffering members, and watched over his human sanctuary, to preserve it from injury or to repair its ruins. Such a life of religious charity was fittingly crowned by the perfect sacrifice of martyrdom. East and West vied with each other in paying homage to the Anargiras, without fees, as our saints were called on account of their receiving no fees for their services. Numerous churches were dedicated to them. The Emperor Justinian embellished and fortified the obscure town of Cyrus out of reverence for their sacred relics there preserved, and about the same time Pope Felix IV built a church in their honor in the Roman Forum, thus substituting the memory of the twin martyrs for that of the less happy brothers Romulus and Remus. Not long before this, St. Benedict had dedicated to Saints Cosmas and Damian his first monastery at Subiaco, now known as St. Scholastica's. But Rome rendered the highest of all honors to the Holy Arabian Brethren by placing their names in preference to so many thousands of her own heroes in the solemn litanies and on the sacred diptychs of the Mass. In the Middle Ages, the physicians and surgeons banded together into confraternities, whose object was the sanctification of the members by common prayer, charity towards the destitute, and the accomplishment of all duties of their important vocation for the greater glory of God and the greater good of suffering humanity. The Society of Saints Luke, Cosmas, and Damien has now undertaken in France the renewal of these happy traditions. The following is the Church's account of the two brothers. The brothers Cosmas and Damien were Arabians of noble extraction. They were physicians, and during the reign of Diocletian and Maximian, healed even incurable maladies no less by Christ's assistance than by their knowledge of medicine. The prefect Lysias, being informed of their religion, ordered them to be brought before him, and questioned them on their faith and their manner of life. They openly declared that they were Christians, and that the Christian faith is necessary to salvation. Whereupon Lysias commanded them to adore the gods, 
threatening them if they refused with torture and a cruel death. But as the prefect saw his threats were in vain, bind their hands and feet, he cried, and torture them with the utmost cruelty. His commands were executed, but Cosmas and Damien remained firm. They were then thrown, chained as they were, into the sea, but came out safe and loosed from their bonds. The prefect, attributing this to magical acts, ordered them to prison. The next day he commanded them to be led forth and thrown on a burning pile, but the flame refused to touch them. Finally, after several other cruel tortures, they were beheaded, and thus confessing Jesus Christ, they won the palm of martyrdom. In you, O illustrious brethren, was fulfilled this saying of the wise man, The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men he shall be praised. The great ones, in whose sight you are exalted, are the princes of the heavenly hierarchies, witnessing today the homage paid to you by the church militant. The glory that surrounds your heads is the glory of God himself, of that bountiful king who rewards your former disinterestedness by bestowing upon you his own blessed life. In the bosom of divine love, your charity cannot wax cold. Help us, then, and heal the sick who confidently implore your assistance. Preserve the health of God's children, so that they may fulfill their obligations to the world, and may courageously bear the light yoke of the Church's precepts. Bless those physicians who are faithful to their baptism, and who seek your aid, and increase the number of such. See how the study of medicine now so often leads astray into the paths of materialism and fatalism, to the great detriment of science and humanity. It is false to assert that simple nature is the explanation of suffering and death, and unfortunate are those whose physicians regard them as mere flesh and blood. Even the pagan school took a loftier view than that, and it was surely a higher ideal that inspired you to exercise your art with such religious reverence. By the virtue of your glorious death, O witnesses to the Lord, obtain for our sickly society a return to the faith, to the remembrance of God, and to that piety which is profitable to all things and all men, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come.